Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, verse 1. And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man. Notice, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed, and Jesus seeing their faith. Their faith. Now, at this point, uh, we have no clear uh, indication that Jesus saw the man's faith. Because it said, they, and later you see Jesus seeing there, there is connected to they, and the they is the four people that were carrying the fifth man. Do you get that? So there's no proof that the man that was lying on the stretcher himself actually had any faith at all. Now, we don't know that he didn't. I'm just saying we can't prove that he did at this point, okay? Now watch. <clears throat> he says here, And they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed, and Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Notice no, no mention of faith. He just said, your sins are forgiven. And, G and behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemes. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, that's called a word of knowledge by the Spirit. Why didn't it say, and Jesus operating by a word of knowledge? Why didn't it say that? Because he didn't operate by gift. He operated by the fullness of the Spirit. And the gifts are in the Spirit. And when you walk by the fullness, you won't talk about gifts. You will talk about the result. So, and Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? Now notice, what, what did they think? <clears throat> they thought, this man blasphemeth. Jesus said, that's evil. You're thinking evil. Notice the thought process. He said, wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? Now watch this. For whether is easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and walk. You hear that? What is easier to say? Well, he says, whether it's easy to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or arise and walk. Well, uh, arise and walk is fewer words. So that'd be easier to say, wouldn't it? He says, but that you may know that the Son of Man hath power, authority, on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up your bed, and go unto your house. Now, we're going to stop right there for just a second. Notice what Jesus did. This man's on a bed, palsied, right? Also known as paralysis. And he tells this man, your sins are forgiven, right? He's, but he says here, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. What did he tell him to do? The one thing he couldn't do. He told him to do the impossible. Do you get that? Today, if I told someone on a stretcher, rise, take up your bed and walk, half the time, they were, or more than half the time, they'd look at me and go, well, if I could do that, I wouldn't be here in the first place. Well, I, are you silly? I can't do that. Do I look like I can get up and walk? And I'll be honest with you, I'd probably just try to walk off. And say, well, when you're ready to get up, get up. Why? Because you have to obey the command. Jesus told him. Now notice, Jesus not only told him to do something he couldn't do physically. Do, do you get that? I, I want that to sink in. Jesus told him to do the impossible. Why do you think, and if you've ever been in the healing line or around the healing line, many times whenever someone comes to me and they say, I've got this or got that, then I say, okay, we minister to them, we set them free, and I say, now, do what you cannot do. What am I doing? I'm following Jesus' example. I'm telling them to do the impossible. And if they just stand and go, well, I, I can't, I can't do that. Okay, stay bound. Why? Because you have to obey. I can't make you be free. Do you understand? I can give you the truth that'll make you free. And I can deliver the power, but faith, listen, you have to realize the gospel is the power of God unto salvation, unto healing, unto deliverance. The gospel, the good news, is the power of God unto salvation, amen, to all who believe. So it's that gospel, it's that good news. What is the good news? You're free from your infirmity. You're free from your sickness. You're free from your bondage. That's the good news in Jesus' name, amen? 
But the gospel, the truth, the word not being preached to them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it, profited them nothing. So even though we can lay hands, even though power is transmitted, even though it's there and you are set free. In other words, the chains may still be on you, but the locks are unlocked. And all you got to do is do something to let them fall off. Amen? But if you just sit there and look at it and go, well, the chains are still there, guess what? You're going to leave the same way you came in. There has to be an action on your part. My part is to set you free. I can set you free. Why? Because Jesus gave me that authority in his name and by those stripes. So we have the authority to do it, and we have the power to do it. But at some point, you're going to have to decide to walk free. Amen? Amen?